Hi all, this is uh, your first lesson on urban places, so let's have a look. Um, we're looking at urban places and world cities and we're trying to look at and learn why people live in cities. So this is what we're looking at in terms of syllabus outcomes and what we're learning about. We're looking at the nature, character and spatial distribution of world cities. Now before we start doing that, we need to look at world, why world cities are so important. So I'm going to take this lesson to explain why I like some of the history, why people live there, and some of the impacts. So let's have a look at the number of people living in cities. In um, 2000, there was, um, sorry, in 1800, there was 2% of the world's population was urbanised. In 1950, 30% of the world's population was urbanised. And in 2000, 47% of the world's population was urbanised. And it's estimated that in 2030, 60% of the world population will be urbanised. And this is really important because obviously there's been a big shift for where people are moving to from the countryside. This is um, a world map of where people live, population distribution, and we can start seeing patterns of where people are living, particularly in Asia, um, India and China, and parts of Indonesia, some very heavily urbanised centres. And that's going to cause some problems, but we'll look at that later on when we start looking at um, mega cities. So, when we're looking at urbanisation, what are we talking about? Well, these are, these are two key words that we really need to look at. Urbanisation is my country's proportion of population lives in towns and cities. Urban growth is when an urban area's population increases over a certain time compared to its size. Okay, two very different things. We need to get our heads around that so we understand that. Um, rates of urbanisation at the moment are highest in developing countries, but that's not always been the case, and that's led to more and more problems. But I want to explain why we've had that shift. And then, obviously, urbanisation involves the shift of people from rural areas to urban areas. These are called push and pull factors. And remember, rural like in a countryside, country town, urban areas, big, big cities. So let's have a look and see why people have moved from the countryside to cities. Well, I've got two pictures here. The first picture, jobs. This is job opportunity. People perceive that cities are a place where people are going to get jobs, they're going to have better standards of living, they're going to get more um, access to education, more chances of education, um, better um, medical facilities, real big opportunities. Now, I've put this other picture of 1800 Victorian London. These are the conditions that people end up living in. They're perceived to be you know, really good living conditions, but in reality, they're not. As a result, we get this big clump of people um, trying to find a way, and as a result, we get substandard housing, um, not enough resources and services. Now, the reason why I put this picture in is because in developed countries like Australia, UK, USA, they've had this time to manage their urbanisation, manage um, the movement of people from the countryside to urban areas. Whereas developing countries, they haven't. They've urbanised rapidly. And that has caused a lot of problems. And as a result, world cities like London, New York, Tokyo have been able to build infrastructure, housing to accommodate all these people moving so quickly. So that's the biggest um, re like reason why people move to cities. Obviously, it depends from person to person, but in general, it's jobs, education, um, medical facilities, housing. It's all perceived to be better. And these are called push and pull factors. But remembering, in developed countries, We've had this length, long length of time, over 250 years, basically caused by industrialisation, the Industrial Revolution. In developing countries, they haven't had that. It's only since the 1950s. So have a look at push and pull factors. So push factor is something that makes you want to leave. Now, these push factors that are you're in your textbook, they're for developing countries. So a push factor makes you want to leave, it's because your landlessness, that means you don't own land. Um, rural poverty. Poverty, when we don't have enough money, um, it's in rural areas. War, civil war, lack of educational opportunity, intolerance of alternative lifestyles, 
transfer of land from subsistence to commercial farming. Subsistence is when you're just making enough food just for yourself. Commercial is where you're selling um, your crops to make money. Desertification, that's when land is not able to be used for and turns into a desert. Lack of medical facilities and rapid population growth. A pull factor, remember that attracts you to live in the city. Employment opportunities, promise of high living standards, entertainment, medical facilities, and educational opportunities. So, going back to the um, um, lesson goal about what we're doing, we're looking at urbanisation, what it is, and why people move there. Okay, thanks.